Growing squash in Florida is not the easiest of all of the crops to grow, but it is absolutely doable. So we're going to be discussing today uh, why many people get frustrated when they see all of these gorgeous blooms on their squash plants, but they're not getting any fruit. We're also going to be talking about a few tips uh, to help your vines um, thrive and move past any pest or fungal issues. And I'm also going to be discussing a few of the varieties of squash that do grow really well here in Florida. This here is a Seminole pumpkin. It is one of the varieties that does exceedingly well here in Florida for squash. And one of the first things that many of my clients and students will come to me with when growing squash is, I'm getting all of these gorgeous blooms and I'm not getting any fruit. What the heck is going on? Well, what happens with squash is actually pretty amazing and intricate. It definitely shows you the beauty of nature. Squash plants produce male and female flowers. And in order for the female flowers to set fruit and grow into a squash, it needs pollination from a male flower. In Mother Nature's design, uh, what happens is the plant will first produce lots and lots of male flowers, not a single female flower to be seen. And that is to draw in and attract the pollinator species to the area. It's basically training the bees and the wasps and all of the other pollinators that there are flowers here so that they are frequenting the area prior to the plant putting forth the energy of producing a female bloom. So what you'll see is lots and lots of male blooms for sometimes weeks, uh, sometimes up to a month, maybe a little bit longer depending on the variety that you're planting. After that point, you will start to get female blossoms. Now each female blossom needs to be pollinated four to seven times. Uh, but because they've been putting out all of these male blooms, hopefully you should have more than enough pollinators in the area already to make sure that happens. You can identify a male and a female blossom by the base of the flower. A male blossom will not have the telltale fruit bump at the base of it, whereas a female blossom will have what looks like a miniature squash at the bottom of the flower. This does not mean that that flower has already been pollinated and is going to produce viable fruit. That is just the starting point per se uh, for the flower and the fruit to develop from there. It will still need to be pollinated before that fruit actually begins to grow. This seminal pumpkin vine was planted several months ago. Now when I first planted these seeds, they were small starts. They had beautiful lush foliage, uh, just like the rest of the plant out there. But because it's been around for several months, it has succumbed uh, to different fungal issues on the leaves. There was a little bit of pest um, pressure in the beginning, some caterpillars I handpicked. Uh, since then, I have not done anything for this plant um, besides handpicking caterpillars, maybe two or three nights in a row, uh, and that took care of that. Just enough to give it enough growth to get past that point. But um, because they have been in the ground so long, it did eventually have um, some fungal issues. So you can see here that these vines are essentially defoliated. The root and the base of the plant is still in the ground, but as far as the foliage, it's gone. Pro tip, a lot of people think that the silvering on the leaves of the squash is a fungal or um, mildew issue. It's not, that's naturally occurring in the plants. So this silvering on the leaf, this like whitish pattern that you will see, and it does vary. Some squash varieties will have it more intensely than others, but that is perfectly normal. It is not a sign of any fungal issue and you do not need to do anything about it. So vining squash have a pretty cool characteristic. This does not apply to bush squash varieties, but it does apply to any of your vining varieties. They will root along the entire length of the stem. So as you can see here, it has set down a new set of roots and it will do this at every node along the length of the stem. Why is this important and why does it matter? 
This can help the plants survive pest attacks. It helps it absorb more nutrients and it can be really beneficial if you're dealing with squash vine borers or anything like that. If you have a bush variety and say a squash vine borer gets into the base of the plant, the entire plant will succumb and die. But when you have a vining variety that you allow to climb and crawl across the ground, it will root itself and therefore have a new point of contact to take up nutrients, take up water, and continue growing. Many of the vining varieties can get quite large and expansive, so allowing it to crawl along the ground does take quite a bit of room but it does give you a little bit of protection or buffer against some of the pest pressure that is pretty common here in Florida. You can absolutely allow it to trellis or climb a fence or a tree or something like that, but you won't have those additional points of contact for the root to get in and gain access to the nutrients and water. So it's definitely a choice whether you have the space to let it crawl on the ground or whether you want to save space and have it climb vertically. Caterpillars munching on your squash plants are super, super common here. I did say at the very beginning I was hand picking when the plant was young. Now I kind of just let mother nature take its course. I use more of an integrative pest management approach. I do have a free one hour class that I've posted on YouTube that goes more in depth on this pest management approach. If you want to learn more about that, just click the link above. Now, uh, as a side tip, when you're looking for caterpillars in your squash plants, say you see leaf damage but you're not finding the culprit. Uh, one tip is to go out at night with a flashlight. They practically glow in the dark. Uh, so doing that, they're more active in the evenings when they don't have uh, predator pressure like birds and stuff searching for them. During the day though, they will actually hide under the leaves. So they will excrete kind of like a cottony web and curl themselves up into the plants. Now you can find this on any, not just squash, but any variety of vegetables. So this is definitely a useful tip to know. So if you find any sort of leaves that are curled over, if you unfold it, you will almost always find the caterpillar. Now we are going to go over the three varieties of squash that actually grow really, really well here in Florida. I'll start with the one that I have growing around my feet, which is the Seminole Pumpkin. This is a Florida heirloom variety that the Native Americans in the Everglades area and up through Central Florida used to grow. And this is a vining squash, as you can see, very vigorous vine, uh, reach 50 or 60 feet in length by the end of the growing season. You'll typically get around five to 10 pumpkins per vine uh, by the end of the season, and they are a winter squash. So they will get a sort of soft orangish pink color to them, and they will have a thick skin. They do keep quite well. Uh, so if you have the space, you can certainly grow multiples and have an entire season's worth of winter squash for storage indoors um, that will keep you through uh, the year. The second variety of squash that does really, really well here is called tatumi or calabasa. This squash is kind of unique in that it can be a summer squash or a winter squash, depending on when you harvest it. Again, it is a vining variety. Uh, this should be a trend here. The bush varieties just don't thrive quite as well here with all of the pest pressure that we get. Um, but the tatumi squash is another vigorous vine. Uh, it doesn't get quite as large as the Seminole pumpkins can get, um, probably more like 40 or 50 feet when all is said and done. Um, but it does produce more, especially if you're picking them frequently at the younger stage. So you can harvest them at two different stages. You can harvest them when they are young, small, and green, and use it as a zucchini substitute. Um, they're little round balls and you can grill it, uh, saute it, anything you would use a summer squash for, you can use the tatumi for. 
if you prefer, you can let it go all the way to ripe. Again, it will get kind of that pumpkin color to it. The, the skin will thicken and you can use it as a winter squash. These squash are considerably smaller than the Seminole pumpkin squash, maybe the size of your palm, uh, about the size of a softball, a large softball. Um, but it does do really, really well here in our climate. The third variety of squash that I'd like to mention is chayote, which is actually a perennial squash, especially if you're in southern and central Florida. North Florida, it will probably be more of a perennial as it does like tropical climates. If we get a hard freeze in central Florida, it will probably die back. Sometimes it will regrow, but it is a prolific producer. So you should easily have enough squash to be able to start a new plant the following season. Now, chayote is from Central America, so it is not something that you would typically see in a store, but it is uh, really well adapted to growing in tropical climates. It has very um, minimal issues, if any at all, with um, any of your fungal issues. It is pretty resilient to pests as well. Uh, it is a very large vine, it is very vigorous, and it is perennial, so you will have to find it a nice home. A lot of people will use it as a uh, arbor or a, a walkway. It'll let it climb on the trellis of the walkway. It does take up a significant amount of room, but it's perennial. You plant it once and you have squash for years to come. I hope you all found this video on growing squash in Florida helpful. The flower thing always seems to send people for a loop and now you have a few tips and tricks to keep the pest pressure and fungal issues at bay so that you can successfully grow squash here in Florida. If you enjoyed this video and want to find more Florida-based vegetable gardening videos, make sure to head on down and subscribe to the channel. And hit the little bell next to it so you're alerted every time a new video comes out on Florida vegetable gardening. Have a beautiful day.